So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Chevy Volt, which is discontinued right now. That's 2017 model and it's a base. There is only two available, used to be, that's a base model LT and the Premier one, which is fully loaded. So this car has a battery and it's like a previous plug-in. So you can plug it, you can charge it, and you can drive on the battery only for about 40 miles. Depends how you're driving it and what you want from this car. In general, it is a beautiful car in my opinion, because I think for the money it's worth right now, especially you can buy only the older Prius in not so good condition. And this car, it's much, much better than the Prius, believe me or not. So what I was going to say about design, I do love the design of this car, the tail lights, the headlights, the way it looks. What I do not like, that's the way you sit inside the space inside the car. It's not that big. Plus, on the back of this car, there is only two seats, not three. I mean, it has two cup holders on the back, which is really good for two passengers only on the back. For Uber, it's useless. Uh, for the food delivery, it's good. For the family, it's useless. For the daily commuter, it's a really good car. So this LT model comes with 17-inch tires, which is really good for the city. The Premier one comes with 18, and I think for the city, it's not that good as a 17. So for the price of this car right now, the 2017, 2018, with a little bit over 100,000 miles, you might gonna get this car for about 13, between 13 and 15 thousand dollars, which is really good. I think it's really cheap for this car. The parts for this car, they're not expensive. I mean, maybe some part, the body parts, they are expensive because it's hard to get and you have to wait for it. Like I say, there is a fender liner, which has, I was waiting about 90 days, but the headlights, Designed so good and they made with LED lights, uh, which is good at night. They're running lights, it's LED, it looks beautiful. There is a lot of chrome on the front end of this car, looks so good. And under the hood, I'm going to show you the engine and I'm going to show you the pipe, which I was saying it's leaking. It was leaking, but it's fixed now and I didn't have any problem over the year. So there is a valve right there sitting on the pipe. The one was leaking, giving me a problem. There is a small engine, 1.4, and uh, it's the same engine as other Chevy has. They add something, they add turbo on it. But in general, it's the same engine, and there is a lot of different parts. They might gonna go bad. Uh, you might gonna face the problem with camshafts, with something else, but they are cheap, and it's easy to replace. And uh, some other Chevy, we did it already. It's not a huge job. It is a reliable car. It is reliable on parts. They're not so expensive. And a lot of mechanic shops, they are open and can fix any problem with this one. If you want to work yourself on this car, it's pretty much easy. There is a lot of space around the engine. You can pop the cover. You can change the spark plugs if you want to do it. I mean, I never done any spark plugs on any Priuses or any Chevy. I think they, they lost forever, maybe 200,000 miles. They never go in bad. I never heard about the coils going bad or injectors. I mean, they are sometimes, but again, it's not that problem. There's a lot of problems with Chevy engine when it's losing compression because of this, because of that, but not this car. And again, if you get a problem with this engine, just buy it from Junkers for 400 bucks and you're gonna be really good. So there is some fun facts I wanna tell you about this car. So number one, a couple of years ago, I bought this car less expensive than you can buy it right now at the auction. So I put some miles on it, right? And still I can sell this car for more at the auction, not for retail, not for public, at the auction for more what I paid two years ago. It's a seven years, six years old car, right? And the paint on the buttons and the interior itself, it's not falling apart. It's really good. Usually Chevy, after three, four years, the clear on the paint, it's already fading. So this one, I don't know why, but this car, it's not fading yet. I mean, I can see some some paint peeling off from the roof, but the clear is still good. So the space inside the car, if I want to sit on the front, right? And I'm feeling pretty much comfortable, I mean, for the space, right? So now I'm trying to sit on the back behind myself and it's going to be kind of kind of uncomfortable. I can sit myself, I can squeeze here and there. I even can put the seat belt, but it's not comfortable at all. So basically I have no idea who's going to sit on the back, probably on the kids. And again, the trunk area in this car, it's huge. I think for the size of the car, the trunk they made, in my opinion, what they should do, it's move the back seat a little bit back and squeeze a little bit the trunk area so they can have more space for the passengers on the back, but they didn't do it. So one more thing. Uh, it's not my underwear. That's the cover 
for the trunk area and it is original it comes together with the car under the floor in the trunk area and it sits like that i have no idea why you might gonna put something like this but it's not gonna hold forever probably for like a couple of months and that's it it's gonna be stretched out so cool thing i have no idea who designed it and uh, why they designed it this way so again in the trunk what are you gonna get here you're gonna get ta -da! your battery is here your compressor is right here there is no spare tire so be careful be prepared for that and that's it but it is a huge one so you can put a lot of grocery you can put yourself inside you can put the stroller in and you're still gonna have a lot of space i don't know why they did that they should do more space for the back seats but not for the trunk so the cost of maintenance for this car it's really cheap i mean if you're gonna do the oil change and believe me in the league you can find the places who can do it for 50 dollars. they still exist yes they are the brake parts on this car they are similar with different other chevys and you can buy the brake parts same as about tesla about 40 maybe 50 dollars the brake parts itself and the the labor is going to be about 40 dollars to replace them so as we're driving inside this beautiful chevy world 2017 uh i can tell there is pretty much not enough space for the driver as me and uh the plastic panels on the left and right it's it's not good i can feel it i can touch it and during i'm driving i mean if it's a short trip for me that's fine not a problem uh but if i want to go somewhere far it's going to be not comfortable at all and i drove this car before pretty much far uh about one and a half hour from here from la and uh i was not feeling comfortable so every like 30 40 minutes i was stopping by the gas station or somewhere just to walk a little bit get some coffee or cold water and jump back to this car and drive it again uh as i said before this car it's a plug-in it has extra battery so you're gonna charge it for 40 miles uh around 40 miles depends how this car wants sometimes 35 sometimes 42 so i don't know why but it does that so for 42 miles for 40 miles you're gonna drive it on the battery itself and after the engine gonna pop up and uh, you're gonna drive it as a hybrid uh which is really good i mean the full tank on this car it's about 35 37 dollars you can fill it out uh completely and it's gonna be about 350 330 uh miles range again depends how you're driving it but this car uh is my relative driving it it's pretty much enough as i said before so the chevy volt is discontinued right now you're not gonna get new one you might gonna get bolt if you want to but it's not the hybrid it's only electric car so i don't know why they discontinue because probably it was not that popular as a prius and they were thinking they're gonna start selling a lot but again i think they've been short on some parts and some decisions they made on this car i think they're not so practical so and when i got the fender liner i see it's made from like kind of cloth things whatever it's not the plastic the way toyota making it or any other brand so it's a specific material they make in the fender liners i mean why they spending more money to produce that i have no idea but again that fender liner cost me a lot and i had to wait about 90 days the aftermarket parts were not available and somewhere on the internet the price pretty much the same but you have to wait even longer so you can get you were could get this car only in two editions there is number one it's a premier which is comes with the line keeper blind spot assistance and this and that and that a lot of different uh features but this one it's the lt which is base but it has leather seats which is not leather and some of them as a lt they comes with cloth seats i don't know is it it was like special order or they've been just doing this and that so what this car has it has backup camera it does have the satellite radio you can connect your phone you can put the usb and charge your phone or and the good point this car doesn't have usb-c type c charger which i hate a lot so for pretty much two years of having this car in my inventory for different reasons like i say my relative driving it and uh, uh she likes it a lot and i do like it a lot because this car not having any problems at all i would say only one time last year what's happened the car start overheating when you're driving far 
on the freeway. So I was thinking probably maybe the head gasket went bad or the electric pump, coolant pump went bad or something else. I mean, I didn't care much about it because again, I checked the, one of the sources for the used parts and I see this engine for 2016, 17, 18, whatever uh, volt, it's only $390. $390. You can buy the used good engine with warranty. I was like, what? No way it could, could be, but I figured out, yeah, it is. It is 400 bucks. You can buy the used engine and put it on. And uh, if you have any problems, probably it's going to be even cheaper to do the to do that instead of replace, I don't know, oil leak uh, or any other broken parts on the on your engine. But anyway, so I was thinking, OK, let you drive it till the end, till the car is going to stop completely. And uh, I'm just gonna tow it to my shop uh, and ask the guys to replace the engine, gonna order it right away and this and that, so no worries. Uh, after a while, I took this car and checked it myself and I didn't find any uh, mixed oil with the coolant or any coolant leak, I didn't see it. I'm like, I see that there's a low coolant level in the uh, coolant reservoir. Oh, I'm like, okay, so I had more. Um, she drove it again a little bit, the light came on again, the car was overheating, stopped immediately, blah, blah, blah. So we've been going all around that problem and trying to figure out where the coolant going to, but it's not going at all. So I was thinking, okay, it could be the EGR because somebody at the dealership, uh, not so smart, uh, Chevy dealership, uh, they told me probably that's your EGR and you have to buy the new one and replace it. Maybe not the EGR valve itself, but maybe it's an EGR cooler. I'm like, okay. So whatever, I told my other mechanic, like, can we check the jar cooler? Because the guy say, am I leaking inside? And it's going together with the exhaust gas and just burning the coolant inside the, inside the catalytic. Catalytic might gonna get damaged and this and that. So there's a lot of problems could be. So he checked it out. He even somehow took it out and pressurized it. And uh, he didn't find any problem. And after a while, again, we start checking it. We did the pressure test. We found a small little valve, the coolant uh, on the coolant line which is sitting right under the radiator support, the upper part. And you cannot see it, you cannot find it. And it was leaking so slowly, so little, uh, it was not marking any points on the engine or engine car parking around. It was just leaking somewhere to the bumper and disappearing. So it was so funny. Uh, I went to a dealership, I ordered that piece. It was like $30, something like that. So I replaced it, that valve together with the pipe. And that's it. It's been more than a year right now. And uh, besides the oil change I'm doing in this car, and I'm doing oil change on this car around 10,000, maybe 9,000 miles between the oil changes, just because she's driving on the battery a lot. And my oil reminder always shows me about 60, 70% left on the oil change. Even if I'm doing the oil change after around 10,000 miles, that's just crazy. So what else I like about this car, you do have an original recuperation, so which is like going through the brakes, you saving some more energy, which is going back to your battery. But again, on the top of it, you do have a pedal shifting on the left side. I would say just a switch, but as soon as you press it, the car just going slowing down right away. I don't know why they did it. Maybe it helps a lot when you're driving on the high speed on the freeway. And the car's in front of you, you're just stopping and you're pushing the brake and it, you feel it, it's not enough. So you're doing the switch and the car slowing down itself by transmission. So this is really cool. And I didn't see anything like that on any other car. If you did see that before, just, just put your comments and uh, definitely I'm going to check it out on the other one. So while you're driving this car, you do have a three different modes. That's, so that's a normal, that's a sport mode, and that's the mountain. Mountain, I think it's the same as you drive in Prius on a B uh, position. So when you're going down the hill, it's doing more recuperation and charging your battery back while you're driving it. So that's number one about the mods, right? The number two, there is a lot of different compartments. Like I say, there is a cup holders, two on the front, two on the back. It has one charge point on the back. I don't know why they made it like that, but looks like it's cool. So the compartment, the one is in the middle, the armrest, it's a huge from the outside. But as soon as you're going to open it, it's like not so many pockets. Like there's three different pockets. You can put your phone, you can put something else, but 
it's not that deep it's not that big how it looks like from the outside the glove box is just for the some documents to put your registration insurance card and maybe the gloves that's what it's designed for but nothing else so on the steering wheel we do have a multimedia control we do have a computer control it's super nice the cruise control yeah it's on the left but even the cheapest version of the world it has a steering wheel heated option which is kind of cool but not in california and again if this car has leather seats even the cheapest one it has a heated front seats if you want to buy the car like that right now in june 2023 or a little bit maybe after that i would say buy it because definitely this car worth its own money and if you're going to find the one with low mileage it's going to worth more but you can buy it you can keep it after two three years of using it you're gonna sell this car for maybe about the same price or a little bit cheaper but not significantly so it's not gonna depreciate a lot it's always gonna be on demand it's really good cool good built car uh, and i would say if you're gonna choose between the prius and the volt i would say the buy volt for sure it's much better it's much cooler it's low on the maintenance like I say, all the parts available, you can buy it. Maybe some of them you have to order it, but it's only going to be the body parts or something internal. Uh, but in general, it is a cool car. And for 15000 there is nothing else. I would say you can buy it with plug-in uh, comparable to that. One day we might going to talk about the Kias and Hyundai's, the plug-ins, the same money you can pay. You can buy the Toyota Prius plug-in but again if you compare it with Volt it's not the same car it's not the same quality and it's definitely not going to work the same after the several years of usage so put some likes put some dislikes if you don't like it uh, if you want me to review something else and show you what else available on the market for your price budget just tell me your budget or tell me the car what do you want me to drive and talk about the maintenance and the usage of this car uh, but I do appreciate you a lot. You're watching my videos. Thank you so much, guys, and see you later on.